Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen series. Today I'm doing a little bit of an experiment and I'm comparing three different methods, three different techniques to make the Ramos Gin Fizz. And I wanna discover which one is gonna make the fluffiest Ramos. Make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna list off the most important factors when making your Ramos Gin Fizz. So I'm gonna keep the recipe consistent across the board. So it's a nice even, comparison between the, the three different methods. So measure out 60 mil of your preferred gin. I'm using threefold. So a citrus four gin will work really well in the uh, Ramos Gin Fizz. The recipe does call for equal parts of lime juice and lemon juice. So 15 mil, half an ounce of each. I've pre-measured it and that's equal lemon juice to lime juice. So 30 mil in total, one ounce. Just make it easy just for the video. And then 15 ml, half an ounce of one to one simple syrup. And big shout out to all the new Patreon people. Thank you for jumping on and uh, supporting the channel. It's much appreciated. And then heavy cream. Make sure you use heavy cream because you want the fat content. So 30 ml, one ounce. And then orange blossom water. Don't go too heavy on this, otherwise your drink will be overly fragrant. And I'm gonna shake until the ice is completely dissolved. So I wanna make sure I know how much ice is going in there and therefore how much dilution. So roughly about 40 to 45 mil of dilution, which in my case, I know my ice cubes are 15 grams each. So I'm adding three cubes and then shaking until that's completely dissolved or melted. But before I shake, almost forgot the egg white. I know a lot of people are gonna cringe the fact that I'm cracking the egg over the top of it. But I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> I like to live crazy on the edge. And then shake until the ice is completely melted. But I must mention as well, because the ice is gonna melt, essentially I'm continuing the shake on afterwards for a little bit, and that's the dry shake. A little bit gas from that. <laughs> Need to go back to the gym. I've been in lockdown for a little bit. So uh, make sure you start with a cold glass and keep it in the fridge or freezer, preferably the freezer. And I'm measuring 30 mil, estimating 30 mil, one ounce soda water into the glass. Nice and cold, extra bubbly. and then strain over the top. Now I'm gonna let that rest for at least a minute. Okay, so that's been two minutes and it's allowed the, the, the foam set to separate from the liquid. Now we're gonna pour a little bit more soda on top, straight down the middle and see if we can raise It up over the top. So I'm gonna use my jigger to add the soda just to make it a little bit easier for myself. If you've got the OXO, like uh, stainless steel angled jiggers, I'll leave a link in the description. They are perfect for, for transferring soda into a Ramos. Uh, quite a number of YouTubers have done the Ramos Gin Fizz and each have like kind of used a little bit of a different technique. Um, Jean Felix from Truffles on the Rocks, Educated Barfire, Leandro, uh, and we also did a collaboration with Cara from Behind the Bar. So I'll leave a link to all those videos so you can have a look around and see which method you prefer as well. And I'm mainly doing this test just to, to work out the, 
the best technique to make it. So if you want some extra history, um, I also recommend going on to Cocktail Time by Kevin Koss. Uh, he delves into the history a little bit more, so that's perfect. So the key to this is making sure that you wait long enough between actually pouring the drink and then adding the second lot of soda. I'll try to go a little bit higher. I think if we go any higher, it's going to cascade over the edge. And the test is to make sure that you can put a stainless steel straw in the middle and it will stand upright. So this one is definitely not my best Ramos gin fizz that I've made, not that I've made many in my time. And we have a foam of about almost, almost five centimeters, two inches. Such a delicious drink. Delicious. It's a really light and refreshing drink. You can get that uh, fluffy kind of meringue-like texture on the top. I'll be intrigued to see if the next version makes a better head. So admittedly, that last version wasn't my best Ramos Gin Fizz with shaking. I would probably shake it for a little bit longer and let it rest for that little bit longer as well. And therefore you'll get a firmer foam on top. And then when you pour your soda in, you'll be able to lift above the glass a little bit higher than what I did. On to the next one, I'm gonna measure out exactly the same ingredients. You know the recipe, I've already left it up top, so I'll just quickly go ahead and make this, make this drink. And the technique that I'm using is testing out the, the old Hamilton Beach Thick Shake Blender and see if this does better than, than hand shaking. So lemon lime juice, add that to your gin, touch of sugar, heavy cream, and a dash of orange blossom. I'm just adding a short dry shake just because I've got the egg white in there so I want to emulsify that. And then add three cubes. So 45 grams roughly of my ice. And then I want to blitz this until the ice is completely melted. That's pretty much it. And again, into a chilled glass. This one's straight from the freezer and approximately 30 mil one ounce of soda. Now I can see this has created some bigger bubbles. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a swirl and, and tap just to try and knock some of the air out of that. Mostly melted. I'm gonna start a timer for one and a half minutes. Gently pour the soda water on top. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, I could, when I added the straw and I could feel how dense that foam was. The, the straw, even with its stainless steel weight behind it, it slowly fell into the drink. It kind of floated a little bit. All right, the official record. Official record is 75 millimeters or three inches. That's 50% better than the first one. And taste wise, technically it's had the same amount of dilution. So uh, it should taste exactly the same. Maybe the texture will be a little bit different. I'd say the flavor is the same. It's just a little bit more textural, a little bit more silky. On to method number three, which is actually the reason why I'm doing this particular video. I saw an article on punchdrink.com 
uh, only released a couple of days ago stating that the Death & Co team like to use a ISI cream whipper. This is actually a soda gun, I know, uh, but they use nitrous oxide to essentially infuse and gas, gas the cream, or in this case, the drink, and therefore it makes a really beautiful, silky texture. I have actually experimented with this. I tried it quite a few times the other night without great success. This is my last canister, so hopefully what I learned the other night will translate into this experiment. So same again, same measurements as I've done before, 60 mil, two ounces of your preferred gin. And then equal parts, 15 mil of lemon juice, 15 mil of lime juice, totaling 30 mil, one ounce, 15 mil, half an ounce of simple, Thirty mil one ounce of heavy cream, dash of orange blossom water, and then one egg white. And again, I'll give it a quick dry shake just to emulsify the egg. Now I'm adding three cubes. And I'm going to shake until the uh, ice is completely dissolved and then gas it in the ISI whipper in the soda gun. So in the punch drink article it wasn't very specific about uh, how they actually did it. I tried to follow along by what was written in the article and I wasn't that successful. So uh, I'm basically dry shaking, shaking with three cubes of ice letting that melt and then just gassing it in the, in the side. And I think that should work, hopefully. So I've had my soda siphon sitting in the fridge so I can make sure that it keeps nice and cold and doesn't uh, warm up the drink. And pressurize the soda siphon with nitrous oxide. Give it a little bit of a shake. Now ordinarily the soda gun has a uh, pipe that goes down to the bottom and it pulls out the liquid from the bottom, but I've taken that out so that when I release the gas and depressurize the chamber, it's releasing it from here and not pulling out the liquid. So it won't make a mess, hopefully. The advantage with the ISI cream whipper is that the spout, instead of coming out sideways, it comes straight out the top. So you can essentially just tip it upside down and pour it. But I found that I wasn't having great success with this one. So for those who aren't familiar with the, the soda siphon, essentially you add CO2 to carbonated water, sparkling water. Or in this case, use a different canister, which is nitrous oxide, and that's used to, to thicken cream. Just make sure it's not pressurized. And as well, if it started to separate a little bit, you might need to give a little bit of a stir. This is gonna be extremely thick. That is thick. <laughs> I feel like it's almost too thick. I don't know if you guys can see it on this camera, but at the moment the liquid is about this much and the foam is this much. 
So I'm just giving it a little bit of a tap to try and release some of the bigger bubbles. Um, I've still got a fair bit left in here. It is starting to separate. I can see the liquids lifting the level of the liquid. Just got my timer on, a minute and a half. There's some left in here, but it just, it, I think it's just all foam. Alrighty, minute and a half. I think this is gonna take out the win. Going off this way. Straighten up. Can't go any higher. It's as high as it's gonna let me go. Oh no, I got greedy. <laughs> okay, this one's finished up at about nine and a half centimeters, almost four inches. If I wasn't so greedy, I didn't put so much soda water in, probably would have been closer to to 10 centimeters. That's the problem with the Ramos Gin Fizz. You've got to not be greedy. It's a mess, but they have a Ramos Gin Fizz in a soda gun with nitrous oxide. Just, it, it, I'd say that's on par with the one prior. It's super silky. I mean, Like the foam is just so so fluffy, so dense that it's so soft and meringue-like. Hmm. So by no means was this purely scientific. I mean, it's obviously I could have done a few things a little bit different and stayed a little bit more consistent across the three methods. Um, namely, I was still shaking the cocktail prior to putting it into the, into the, the gun, but uh, takeaways for this, tips on how to make the, the, the fluffiest of Ramos Gin Fizz. Use a really cold glass, use cold equipment. If you're using a siphon, make sure that's kept in the fridge. Make sure you've got really cold soda water. Um, be patient. Uh, I did say a minute and a half at least, but ideally, three minutes and then the, the drink will separate from the foam and the foam will be a lot more dense. Um, obviously the last one had the best foam, it had some real real height on it, but I don't think it's the most practical. So I don't think that's the best, the best way to make it. Uh, if I was to do the Hamilton Beach blender again, uh, I would just change it. I wouldn't use big cubes. I'd probably use like little pebble ice, which would melt a little bit faster because it took me ages to, to blitz that. But that's probably my go-to method. You save your arms, put it in a blender, put it in a, a milkshake maker, pebble ice, dilute really quickly, super frothy, knock the glass around, beat out some of those large bubbles, let it rest for three minutes, top with soda, and you'll have a really nice foam on your Ramos Gin Fizz. Thanks for watching. Make sure you give us a like if you enjoyed today's experiment, and I'll see you soon for another kitchen series. Cheers.